Hey, Hugh, great to be with you. I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me on. You know, two weeks ago, Tony Sayeg promised me the president, and then I open up my, my schedule, and it's Hogan. And I love you, Hogan, but you're, it's, that's like getting a purple uh, stingray for Christmas instead of a red Schwinn. Maybe he meant the president of this quadrant of the building. I, I'm just telling you. I, I, the, the president of the, the, the Navy mess. Yeah, you know, food committee. Maybe that's what he was talking about. We're what waiting for. Was he talking about? I'm waiting for POTUS to call some morning. But it, but in the meantime, Hogan, I, I do have this Washington Post column this morning that just simply says impeachment is a flop, and it is Groundhog Day. Every day it's another flop for the Democrats. When are they going to get the message? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi held a press conference yesterday, and we were all fairly excited when we heard she was going to the podium. We thought, here we go. Now she's going to talk about USMCA that would help our farmers and ranchers and manufacturers immediately. And then we thought, all right, well, maybe it's about prescription drug costs, getting those things down, fixing health care, our infrastructure that needs uh, repairs across this country. That's what we thought it would be about. And instead, she walked to the podium and said, move forward on this impeachment sham. And and uh, for the life of me, I can't figure it out. I mean, she – look, she has no control over her caucus. That's pretty obvious. But she clearly has control over the media still because when she left, there was just one person who had the guts to even ask a question. Uh, and she shouted that person down as well. I mean, uh, I, I've never seen anything like this in my life. The The, the move – uh, to impeachment so quickly with no proof, no evidence, a bunch of quote unquote witnesses who didn't actually witness anything. Of all the people they asked, only one person had a direct conversation with the president about any of this, and that one person said he was clear that there was no quid pro quo. He wanted nothing, nothing from the Ukraine. So I don't know why they're going this way. That's a question for them, but it doesn't hurt Donald Trump. It hurts the American people. They're the ones who deserve a Congress and a government, quite frankly, as we move into the holiday season, that works on their behalf with their best interests at heart, not the selfish political interests of the Democrats and the Speaker of the House. Now, Hogan, I'd like to explain for the Steelers fans and new audiences, just picked up Newman, uh, Georgia, for example, uh, my, who my guests Good. are. And, and you've been on a number of times, but I've known you a long time ago. I can't remember when I ran into you down at one of the Waffle Houses in either Atlanta or South Carolina. You've been <laughs> at this a while. Which candidates and campaigns have you worked for? Oh, goodness. Uh, I was with Mike Huckabee in 2008. I actually worked for Mike Huckabee when he was governor. So I've known Sarah Sanders, for example, since she was 19. I've known her for about 25 years. Uh, I worked for Rick Santorum when he ran for president and finished second to Mitt Romney. I worked for Elizabeth Dole for a time as well. I ran the Republican Party in South Carolina in 2008 as well. So uh, I've been all over this <laughs> this country for a long time, did a lot of stuff as a commentator, too, for CBS and and uh, Fox and other networks. So, uh, and so I, I ask you that because it's, it's an extraordinary background and perspective that you bring. This is abnormal. The Democrats are off of the tracks. This is just not normal. Yeah, and I, look, I've never seen anything like this in my, in my you know, 30 years in, in politics. I actually worked— for um, uh, you know, many people across this country in in, in various areas of of of, um, of America, and I was just in Arkansas actually duck hunting uh, for Thanksgiving with my father, and we hunt with a lot of farmers there, and these are you know three and four generation farmers, and they are telling me all they cared about was USMCA, all they cared about was a deal with China. I didn't get one question about impeachment. Uh, we send out our cabinet officials across the country to talk about their various issue areas. They report back to us. They don't get one question in the local media about impeachment. It's all about issues. And I'll tell you this, a reporter came in my office the other day, and when this impeachment stuff kicked off, before the museum closed, um, you know, the, the historic museum down here in D.C. that chronicles how the news media covers things, they put out all of the 50 states' front pages of their local newspapers, statewide yep. run newspapers. The, the reporter thought it would be a great exercise to go down and see how the states are covering impeachment. This particular reporter told me not one newspaper had impeachment on the front page. Not one. Yep. This and, is and not by doing the way, anything. And the, the reporting that does exist is often flawed. The president just tweeted out, do not believe a story that has anonymous sources. You know, I got asked yesterday by a Reuters, a Bloomberg reporter about Robert O'Brien. And I said, on the record. They said they offered me off the record. I said, no, if I'm going to say something, I'm going to be on the record, Hogan, like you right. are. I just don't believe in off the record stuff. I just don't believe it. Uh, Hogan Gridley, Merry Christmas to you. Back to work with you. You know, Back to the, you know, pulling the oars in the press office. But rem remind Tony, he promised me the president. He sent me Hogan.
And, you know, Got it's it. like the Indians trading with the Yankees. The Yankees used to take all of our players and send us Charlie Spikes, but I love you, Hogan.